Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been sick for the past couple days, but the grind never stops. So, today you're going to get the ASMR version of Overthrow Disc Golf. Drop. So today we're going to talk about coiling how to coil properly and how to uncoil properly. First, what is coiling? When we talk about coiling, we're mostly talking about this motion where we start twisting everything back and start twisting ourselves up like a spring. So on the back swing, we coil our shoulders, our unit, our core here, and we even coil into this back hip here. So we coil everything backwards so that when it comes time for the forward swing, we will uncoil. Sometimes we talk about this as a rotation. Obviously, we're coiling the upper body against the lower body. When do we start coiling back? We want to start coiling back on the last stride. If we turn back before the last stride, so for example, here during our X step, by the time we get here to our last stride, there is no coil. There's no difference between my shoulders and my hips. Right, so we haven't really wound anything up if we get turned around backwards here early. If someone says you're reaching back too early or you're getting turned around backwards, that's what they're talking about. You're turning your body backwards ahead of time and that's an issue because even though guys get back here with their shoulders, you have to do it at the right time in order to actually load. When we want to do it is after we take this X step, and then on the final stride, we're going to start coiling. You'll see my shoulders move back. You see my core has rotated back against my hips. And there's even some load in this back hip here. So that's when we want to do it, is on that last stride. I'll do it a little more quickly for you. Right here is when we want to start loading. So how do we coil? Um, quite simply, we start pushing this shoulder back, this lead shoulder. We start pushing it backwards as we stride. So you know when people talk about, make sure that you're at peak reach back when your foot hits the ground. Well, that's unnecessary to think about if you're pushing the shoulder back the whole time that this front foot is stretching. So there are a couple ways you can do what I just showed you there, which is working on a progressive load. So. I'm gonna just notch my lead foot out and I'm gonna notch my shoulder back and keep twisting back with my upper body, keep rotating these shoulders back. Another way to work on this is this broomstick. This comes out a lot in lessons. Um, you can put it up on your shoulders here. This makes it not about the hands, but about the shoulders coiling back. So during our last stride, we will coil these shoulders back like this. We'll coil our lead shoulder down and back. Now, the goal here is to make sure, let me drop that first. The goal here is to make sure that you're coiling during the entire last stride, however long that stride may be. So if you're gonna take a really long last stride, you're gonna coil back the whole time and it's gonna be a lot of coil. If it's a short last stride, you're gonna coil back the whole time, but you might not get as far back with your shoulders, with your core here or even as loaded into this back hip. Now, if you make sure that you're loading the entire last step, what you will avoid doing is this nasty little sucker right here, where you start loading and unloading. So you start coiling and uncoiling during the last step. And now you're in this, what Seabass calls horse stance. Your hips are kind of locked out here. You've already lost all the springiness that you would have got from the untwisting of the upper body against the lower body here, and there's just no power. So if you're having trouble with that lead foot leaking open there, it's because you're not spending the entire step coiling, most likely. One other thing about how to properly coil, it's really, really important that as you coil back, you also coil your lead shoulder down, like this. This does a couple things. First, when you coil it down like this, it naturally wants to keep the disc out away from your body. If you coil straight back like this with your shoulders level, 
it's very easy for the disc to get behind you and then you can start collapsing your pocket or rounding. So instead, coil with a tilt here in your shoulders. This is gonna happen at the waist with the core. You're gonna coil this lead shoulder down. And this isn't just for hyzer angles, but it's for all angles. For example, you can see here from the back view of Simon on his hyzer, you can see that his right shoulder is dropped pretty severely below his left. But you can also see that he's got it dropped on this Anheuser shot as well. The amount of tilt at the hip, the amount of drop that this shoulder is, this lead shoulder is below this trail shoulder helps you create the correct disc angle and then you can work out the details from there, arm positioning and whatnot. This is just a shoulder coil video, so watch out for that other one later. How do we uncoil? If we have this tilt here with the sh shoulders going back and we coil this way, you can see that my right shoulder is way below my left. I want to make sure that my shoulder travels up into the pocket and then up after the pocket. That's super important. I see a lot of people go here and they'll be level and then they'll go level and then they'll go down and then they'll wonder why they don't have power because your arm's dropping at the end. The arm's gonna follow the shoulder for the most part. So it's really important that we're able to use all this upward swing trajectory, even on the Anheusers, to get good power and create space as the throw continues. Let me show you from the back view if I don't create that tilt. Here, and now, sorry, I'm automatically creating the tilt. Okay, hold on. Here, into the pocket, notice the little swoop here, and then down out of the pocket. I've taken all of my space away. Let me grab a disc. What am I thinking? Holland. So let me show you what it looks like without the tilt in the shoulders, without coiling down as well as back. If I coil just back here, now my disc wants to pop up into the pocket and I lose all of this space here that the disc wants to have to swing in and then I have to drop my hand here, and now I make my line tight at the end, I lose the out, in, out, as well as pull my disc down. So instead, I wanna make sure I coil this shoulder back. That way I can go up into the pocket and look at all this space I have here for this disc to come in. Loads of space for the disc to come in here, and now I continue to go up and out with the disc, creating space the whole time. It's like having a really, really long racetrack, right? If you've got lots of space after the finish line, you can run through that finish line really solid. But if there's a uh, brick wall five feet after the finish line, you're not gonna smoke that sucker to the end, right? So your body does the same thing. It wants to protect itself. If you start dropping this arm and you start uncoiling and go up and down, or you go even and down, your body's not gonna like that and it's not going to hit that with a bunch of speed. So really important for you to uncoil by going up and then up and following through that swing plane. Now question is, how much coil do you need? The answer for that is not so simple. It depends on the shot that you want to throw. Which shot is going further? This one or this one? So you kind of already know the answer to this, how much coil you should have. It depends on how far you're trying to throw. So the issue is a lot of people want to throw far, but they don't want a lot of coil. So it's people's natural inclination not to get enough. But if you want to throw a control shot, you wouldn't want that much coil. You want it to stay on the eyes on the target for a long time. You'd have your swing path very short because your coil would be very short. You need to learn to adjust this for how far you're throwing. More coil equals, I want this to go farther. Further, further, more, farther. Yes, it's farther. I want it to go farther because we're talking about distance. In each of these shots, no matter what, you wanna make sure as a really important side note that your head is forward and that it's this coil of the shoulders that pushes the head back for you. If you let your head move back before your shoulders or apart from your shoulders, it makes it really easy to get your body back here, but actually not have the tension and the buildup from coiling. It's really important, no matter how far you're throwing, that your eyes are forward and that it's the shoulder that pushes the head back. 
not the head that gives free reign to the shoulders to just go wherever they want. So fun little activity. Put your head all the way back and then see how far you could get your hand to go back behind you and then do the same thing, head all the way forward and try to coil in the right spot. You start feeling different things and it's much easier to manage proper coil that way. Now for some examples, just the uh, small, small coil. Paul McBeth does this a lot just for little approach shots. Where should I go? Maybe that like second goal or something? I was thinking. Okay. Just eyes forward. Not a lot of coil. Uh. Oh, did I say the first goal? Cause that's what I meant. <laughs> so there's no coil because it's a control that I want there and I don't need the distance. Max coil might look something like this. Go, 700 more. Let me do one more. Yeah, it was so janky though. It was like I was so robotic for the teaching point. Yeah. Tried to add like too much gusto for the camera. That's fine. Don't do that. That's fine. That's coiling. It's super, super important. It's like, Super, super important. <laughs> Coincidentally, we were deciding that we were gonna film this today and then I saw a Seabass video that we'll put in the link in the description that talks about this in a different way. Feel free to check that out. What's up, homie? Seabass. Home slice. Gonna put that in there? Love you. That was for Seabass, not you guys. We'll just catch you cats later. Bye.